Hey, what's going on guys, and welcome back to another Codium video. Now in today's video, we're going to be doing something pretty fun, and that's exploring the beautiful world of C-Sharp games. To do that, we're going to go ahead and create a random number generator that generates a number from 1 to 10. However, the difference is between this one and my uh, other video about random number generators is that it's actually going to be a game. We're going to be seeing if we can guess the right number between 1 and 10, or we can even do 1 through 100. Now this is a super easy starting app to build, and I think that we're going to have a lot of fun today. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and skedaddle and uh, get right into this tutorial. Alright guys, now that we are back on our desktop here, let's go ahead and create a new project. So in order to do that, uh, you're going to want to select the Windows Forms app with the .NET Framework. Go ahead and click next, and here we are. We can name it whatever we like. I'm gonna call mine um, number guessing game. And go ahead and click create. All right, now that we're in here, let's uh, go ahead and first start by minimizing our form a little bit. It's gonna be a pretty small game, so we don't need a lot of space. So let's go ahead and start by uh, setting up some properties in the bottom right corner. So the first thing you wanna do is find where it says form border style and change it from sizable to fixed single. And what that's gonna do is limit you from sizing it, or sorry, limit the user from sizing it once the app is launched. And uh, let's go ahead and change out the back color. We don't want a boring white. We want something nice and fun, right? Nice and just vibrant. So <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, I don't know. We could do anything we want. We'll just do like a nice kind of darker, lightish, weird turquoise thingy, yeah. And, uh, okay, so then we're going to just start with those settings. So the next thing we're going to need is a button. So I'll go ahead and click and drag the button onto the screen here. And we're just going to do some simple things. So go to the bottom right corner once again. Let's change out the font a little bit. So let's make it bold. Let's scroll down and make it, you know, like this, uh, you know, whatever font you'd like. I'll just do empty extra. And let's uh, bump it up to size 12. And not empty extra, actually that's symbols. Uh, let's do Myanmar text. Sure, that works. So size 12, Myanmar text. Bump it up in size a little bit so you can read it. And then uh, make sure you still have the button clicked. We're gonna change the text to say guess. And then we're gonna go down to where it says name and change it to guess button, okay? So the first thing I like to always do with my buttons is uh, go ahead and double click on it and that will open up the class behind the scenes and create a nice uh, click method for us. So if we go back to the first video or sorry, the first screen here, um, we have that nice thing set up so far. So, so the next thing that we're going to need is a text box. So go ahead and locate where that is and here it is. Go ahead and click and drag that onto the form. and. Uh, Oop, I did not mean to do that. Um, so careful here, as I've mentioned in my past videos, when you accidentally do something like this, you can't just delete it and then think that you can go on your merry way because it will throw an error. So what you have to do is click on the object that you did not mean to put back there. Click the little lightning symbol and uh, go ahead and erase what this says down here and just make sure it's blank. So that will remove the reference to that. And then we go ahead and go back here and then you'll see that uh, it actually went ahead and removed it. So that's good. So now uh, we take our text box and we widen it out a little bit. And actually, you know what? Let's just make it even with the button so it looks nice. And we're only gonna be using um, a maximum of two characters, right? Or up to three characters because depending on whether or not we do one to 10 or one to 100, obviously that's two to three characters. Um, that's all we're really gonna need. So let's just do that. And then the last thing that we're going to need is a label. So go ahead and drag that onto the screen. And the label is a little bit different than the other ones. So um, make sure you go back to your uh, design settings here. And let's go ahead and change the text on it. So let's say, uh, guess a number. Click enter. Um, make sure that the text is centered in middle center, or you could do top center. And then we're going to go down and scroll to where it says name. We're going to change the name from label to uh, number label. Okay. And then go down to where it says auto size and set it from true to false. And this will allow us to uh, size it how we want. So just bump it up some sizes a little bit. And then we're going to go up here and change the text so it looks a little bit nicer. 
So let's match it up with what we have for the other uh, button here, which is the Myanmar text bold. And then we can make this even bigger, maybe like size 16 or 18. And you'll notice that it went out of bounds. So just widen it out a little bit and then still make sure that that text is centered, which it is, which is awesome. And then go ahead and uh, kind of just center the other elements in the middle of the screen here so that we can make sure everything's nice and lined up. So it looks like I actually had it, I think, originally. So let me move that back and just minimize this as much as it can and then make sure that it's nice and evenly spaced out there. So that, that looks pretty good for a start. And uh, obviously you could fiddle with it later, but uh, you know, for the sake of this tutorial, let's just wrap it up there. So the last thing that you want to do before we go into the back end here is go ahead and find label again and drag that onto the screen. We're going to use this as a nice little score counter. So actually, you know what, instead of dragging it, why don't we just copy and paste the other one and then we can, we can fiddle around with that. So copy and paste this. And just the first thing we're going to do is take the font size down to like a 12. Okay. And we're also going to um, just minimize it kind of like into a small little rectangle, right? Then we're going to change the text to say uh, score with a colon. Okay. And just give it a little bit of room just in case you get a nice high score. So this should be enough breathing room that it can keep a, a double digit score. So the only thing you need to do from there is click on the label, make sure it's selected, then go down to where it says name and instead of label one, we're going to call it score label. Okay, so right here we have our, our text box, our guessing um, button, and then we have our score label and our, our guess a number label. Okay, so now we are ready to go into the back end. All right, guys, now that we're in the back end here, we're going to need a couple things to start. So find your form one method here, click uh, enter to create some space, and then we're just going to go ahead and uh, type in this and dot accept button, and then set that equal to the name of your button. And in our case, it's guess button, and then put a semicolon. And now you might be wondering what this actually is. So, so what this does is the accept button is uh, is a method for the form, and when it's set up so that if you click enter on the keyboard when the program's running, you want this button to be clicked. So what we're saying is, um, you know, when you click enter, you want the guess button to be clicked, right? So now that we have that set up, let's go up here and create uh, two variables. So the first one, we're gonna do uh, random r equals new random. So you're taking the random class and you're constructing a new uh, random object and this class is going to be used to generate the random numbers right so we need that and then we're going to need an int and we can call it uh, current score and just set that equal to zero so this is going to obviously be in charge of keeping track of our current score so we have those two variables set up and now the first the third thing that we're going to need is a guess so call it string guess equals um, just you know blank for now and then uh, the first thing that we need to do is that when this guess button is clicked, we want to um, store the guess, right? So we need to take this guess, paste it here, and then we're going to say guess is equal to text box one, which is the text box that we dragged on the screen. We never ended up naming that. Um, so text box one dot text. So every time that this button is clicked, or if somebody clicks the enter key, um, the user's guess is going to be stored in the guess variable. All right, guys, so the only other thing that we need to do um, inside this guess button method is we're going to check if uh, they won or not, right? So check winner, and then we're going to pass in guess as our parameter. Now, we still have to actually write the method, so go down here, type in um, private void, and then call it check winner so that it matches what that says, string uh, user guess, and then click um, enter and open up these brackets here. So what this is going to do is uh, just create a nice empty class for us. So the next thing that we want to do is create two integers. So um, the first one is going to be num to guess, and that's going to be our randomly generated number, right? So that's going to be equal to r.next, 
and then inside of these braces you're saying um, you're gonna su suggest the range that you want these random numbers to be generated inside of so we're gonna go from 1 to 10 all right guys so now that we we know we have a randomly ge uh, generated number we next have to take the user's guess and convert it from a string to an integer so that we can compare the two. So next we're going to say um, int guest num equals um, int dot parse and then guess. So this int dot parse just converts it from a string to an int. So that's going to be real nice. Then we're going to need an if and an else. So we're going to say that if the um, num to guess is equal to the guest number, so both of the numbers are equal, we want to, uh, we, we have won the game, right? But down here, they are not equal or something else may have happened. So we have not won the game. So now we have our nice notes. Um, let's go ahead and figure out what we need to do inside of these. So the first thing that we want to do is if we won the game, we want to increment the score, right? So go ahead and, and type in current score plus plus with a semicolon. So that's going to increment the score by one. And then we also need to update the text box to let the user know that they have won. So text box one dot text is equal to, and then we're going to say you have won the game. And we can even throw in the number that they guessed. So do a plus and then just say uh, guessed num so that they kind of are reminded just in case they, you know, they forgot. So immediately after winning the game, um, um, actually this should not be text box one. This should be the uh, label. So this should be the number label. And, and remember the number label is this up here, this guess a number. And you can double check that right here, this number label. So there's that. So we want to update that with the results of the game. Then we want to clear out the text box. So text box one dot text is equal to blank. And then all we need to do next is update the score label. So score label dot text is equal to current score. Okay. So, and actually uh, you need to convert the integer to a string. So all you have to do for that is dot to string with open and close parentheses. All right, now down in the else, um, we have lost the game. So we don't want to do anything with the score, but we do want to let them know that they've lost the game, right? So go ahead and copy this and just paste this down here. But instead of saying they won, um, you have lost the game and then throw in that guess number. And also let's add a space here so we can make sure that the, the exclamation mark and the number are not together. Okay, so then we also want to once again uh, erase the text inside the text box. So we're gonna do that. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, we don't really need to do anything else. We don't need to update the score and, and they've lost, so we don't need to like subtract anything from the score. So let's just go ahead and run it as it is. Okay guys, so here's our game and let's go ahead and type in the number one. And then when I click enter, it should uh, you know run the commands and stuff. Okay, so one immediate problem that we noticed is that the text is too big. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So this uh, guess a number thing, let's give it some more space in case it wants to take up a little bit more room and take it from size uh, 16, or sorry, 18, let's bump it down to 14. We don't really need that much space and then let's uh, widen it out a little bit. So let's go ahead and click run again. So now that's running. Let's uh, guess the number one again, click enter. So now we have enough room to show um, the results, which is awesome. But my only worry is that if we have two or three characters, it might go off the screen. So if we do 10, okay, so it still fits, but what about 100? Okay, so with 100, it's uh, very good because it actually takes it to the next line, which is exactly what we wanted. So you'll always know that you have enough room to fit the number that you're guessing. But we want to add a couple more checks. So you'll notice that this this score right here uh, doesn't really say anything. So we want to go ahead and make sure that that's updated. So right inside form one, basically when the form loads, you want to update the label with the current score. So 
score label dot text is equal to current score dot two string. Okay, so let's go ahead and click run again. So you'll notice that it's uh, zero, but we're missing the text that says score. And that's completely fine. You know, we don't necessarily have to have it, but, uh, you know, we might want it. So let's go ahead and, oops, <laughs> uh, click to enter too many times, but, um, yeah, let's go ahead and say the text is equal to score, like we had before. Um, give it a space and then plus this. So let's just copy this part and make sure that we have it replicated throughout the program. Okay, so let's save that and give it another run. Okay, so now we have our score and we have our, our, our things working here. So we should be able to guess one and, you know, we have won the game or whatever and five. Yeah, we've lost eight, you know, and we notice that you can keep clicking enter because it automatically clears the text box, which is super nice. So one other thing that um, you might you might want to be checking for is we're we're guessing numbers between one and ten, right? But what if somebody wanted to type in a thousand? Um, that's not good. But and what if we wanted to type in letters? You know, that's going to literally crash the program. So two things that we want to do is go ahead and click. Uh, put this inside of a try catch so let's do this and make sure that we pause the program here so just take this bracket all the way down to the bottom and take this stuff and tab it inside and then do catch so if you guys have never seen a try catch uh, loop before um, you're basically going to try you know this stuff right here in in this area and then if anything happens at all, um, you're going to catch it right here. So what a lot of people do is just type in exception E because this will catch any exception that it throws. And then they like to like output, you know, like a standard error or something. So in our case, what we're going to do is number label dot text is going to be equal to error, right? So let's just go ahead and do that. So when, when that happens, we don't want anything to happen. We just want to keep our program running. That's what, we're, that's what we're really worried about, right? So let's go ahead and click Start. And you'll notice if, if I want to type in the word the and click Enter, it's going to say error. Nothing happens. The score doesn't go up. Um, you know. But actually, one more thing. We do want to clear out the text box when that happens because that way it allows them to easily jump back into the next round. So uh, clear out the text box and click start. And right here, if I typed in the, clicked enter, error, it automatically gives us back the next game. So I could do five and then 10, and then I could type in the again, nothing happens, you know, keep going, keep playing. And there you go. You guys have a uh, nice, easy app to build and uh, a very nice, fun little starting project if you're just learning to code. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up the video here. Um, thank you for watching so much. That means a lot to me. We are growing like crazy, and I'm so happy to see all the positive feedback on the channel lately. Um, if you like me too, I can build a, uh, a second video for this, or sorry, put out a, uh, another video for this. Um, and we can, you know, spice up the design, maybe add some more features that I hadn't thought of. Um, please drop it down in the comments below if you are interested in that. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching so much. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, comment down below for any thoughts or suggestions for the next video. Please subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And thank you guys for watching. And I will see you in the next one.